Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about the, the, the God of Second Chances. Uh, I talked a little bit while I was studying uh, this you know, for, for a little while. And give me a preface. I, as a parent, and many of you are, have you ever confronted your kids and said, if you were in my shoes, what would you do? If you're, you know, the, the, the time for they did something wrong and, and it's a time for punishment and you had to, to, to discipline them. Did anybody ever say anything like that? I can remember doing that to my kids uh, and they each had their own response. Uh, when my daughter, Valerie, I'd ask her that question and all I get was the shrug. Didn't matter how many times I asked her, it was just a shrug. She was afraid to answer. Uh, but my son, Brian, was a totally different perspective. Uh, he's an analytical type person. So I asked him, said, okay, son, what would you do if you were in my shoes? And his response was, well, dad, give me a second chance. Well, sometimes that warrants it, but, you know, but sometimes you come to a point where you know, enough's enough. But the fact that God is a God of second chances, I want to go through some, some things, uh, short, 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 short lesson. But I want you to turn to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. We'll read some. And as you're turning there, let's, let's, let's go ahead and read, just to save a little bit of time. And Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. And Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Nothing mentioned there, uh, the God of gods. These were the gods of the, of, of the temporal and of the tangible things. Verse 5 says, In the same hour came forth fingers of a man, man's hand, and wrote against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the, the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. You have to put your shoes kind of like in, 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 in his sandals. Kind of, he was terrified. And the fact that God would describe it this way, that his knees shook and, and smote each other, it, Belshazzar had to be scared. And can you imagine while they're having this, this party, this feast, and all of a sudden a hand starts writing on the, on the wall for everybody to see, that would kind of put me in a, in, a, in a trembling state too. Uh, and so down uh, verse 7 says, The king cried aloud, Bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to, to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpret, in, inter yeah, that, uh, inter yeah, there, <laughs> Thereof shall be clothed with scarlet, and, and, and have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, and they could not read the writing, nor make known the king's interpretation thereof. And I'm going to, I'm going to stop right there. there was, now Daniel's around, but he wasn't mentioned uh, from this person's, uh, Belshazzar's uh, thought process. He thought those who he had put in power were, were going to be able to, to help him. And he said, why are we reading here and we're going to be talking about the, the, the God of second chances? Well, let's talk a little bit about well, Daniel, Daniel chapter 5. We're going to talk about the background that sets us up. And then Bible, we're going to do some Bible second chances, some people in the, in the Bible that had, had some second chances. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how we, or maybe how they, uh, might have blundered or, or didn't take opportunity of their second chances that were given to them. So let's talk about back, background. We can, go, we can go back and start with Daniel chapter 3 and go back to Nebuchadnezzar uh, a, a little bit. Uh, but let, let's, let's, before we get there, let's talk about what's happening right here in Daniel chapter 5. 
In Daniel chapter 5, we have Belshazzar, who is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, and he's co-reigner right now. He's co-king. There is a priest who's actually, who actually overthrew the, the kingdom, and, and he's out with the army because right now Babylon is surrounded by the Medes and the Persians. And Darius is out there uh, 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 surrounding this, this great city. Now, Babylon is a city, it's probably about, they say it's about 60 miles wide or in circumference. Uh, the walls were 30, 30 feet high and, and I think, no, 60 feet high and 30 feet wide, or 30 feet high and 60 feet wide. And they said the walls were wide enough that you could take two, two chariots on each side and they could, they could pass each other. So these guys who are right now, Belshazzar and his, his wives and his concubines, his lords and his princes who are, who are partying, even though they're surrounded by the Medes and Persians, they feel that they're pretty safe. Okay, nothing, nothing can harm them. Uh, so, so while this is happening, uh, they're in their party. But I said Nebuchadnezzar was the grandfather of Belshazzar. So... Go back further, Nebuchadnezzar. You can go back and, 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 and his Nebuchadnezzar, we're talking about the chances that Nebuchadnezzar got. We know, but we go back to uh, Daniel chapter 3, and this is the golden statue or, or that Nebuchadnezzar built of himself, and he had all his uh, city, empire, whenever he had the, the, the instruments, and, and you know this is, this is not, not new to you, had all the instruments play, everybody was to bow down before him. Okay, but there are three who did not, and you remember those. Okay, they this this is this is uh, again, as they were bowed down, and, and, and Meshach, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego did not. What was the punishment for their not bowing down? The fiery furnace. Okay, so as they were as they were in, or the the, the instruments were playing. Nebuchadnezzar approached these three and says, says, is it really true that you guys aren't going to bow down when I play the instruments? He, could, he didn't believe it because, because these three were actually handpicked by Nebuchadnezzar and his, his, to be uh, part of his, his uh, uh, princes, his, his, his lords and, and leaders amongst his people. And he, he couldn't believe it. So he gave him another chance and he commanded the music to play and they still stood there strong. And so as these were thrown into the, the, to the fiery furnace. You can jump back to chapter 3 in, in, in Daniel. <clears throat> and in verse 15, it's, and it says, Now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Uh, but if you worship not, you shall, be, you shall be cast down the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And this is the challenge that he gave me. It says, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Nebuchadnezzar is challenging. He's challenging them, but he's challenging God. And this is going to be, this is going to be Nebuchadnezzar's first, first uh, a chance that he has. Because you know the rest of the story. As they're thrown into the fiery furnace, they were unscathed. And what did Nebuchadnezzar see when he looked in? He saw, he saw not three, but he saw four. One looking at the Son of God. And, and then he recognized, got to read the verses, he recognized their God, not his God. So God's, God's working on Nebuchadnezzar to give him, give, him, uh, give him his chances. Okay, so this is his first chance. Nebuchadnezzar's second chance in, in Daniel chapter 4, you remember his dream. And he had this dream of this, of this tree reaching up to the, uh, up to the heavens. And, and, and how uh, great it was and how powerful uh, it was and what it did to all the, all the people and all the creatures that, that were around. And, and he, he prided himself the fact that this was, was his. But he didn't, he, he, this dream, again, he didn't know the interpretation. So he called all his soothsayers, astrologers, magicians, and nobody can interpret. But then Daniel came and, and, and told him what the, what the dream meant. So we can, we can go down to chapter 4 and read a few things. Uh, we'll go down to cha chapter 4, uh, verse 28. And this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar at the, end of the, at the end of the 12 months. He walked in the palace of the king of Babylon. And the king spake and, and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of, of, of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the, for the honor of my majesty? 
Daniel interpreted and, and told him that this tree was him. The fact that his branches and his power and his protection spread out all throughout the world. And it says this was him. But he said that the person, the angelic, the angelic person that came down and cut the tree down and, and had an iron band around it. He, he said, he said your, your kingdom's going to go away. And you're going to become like those animals that are feeding underneath this tree. He says, but the kingdom, the kingdom will, will be yours when you get straight again. So here in verse 30, uh, for 31, it says, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from thee. So this is where Nebuchadnezzar almost blew it because in, in the 12 months between the, the interpretation what Daniel gave him, Nebuchadnezzar still had that pride or still had that, that, that ego uh, amongst him. And so we go down all the way down to verse 37. After this is the, this is the time when, when Nebuchadnezzar actually went out and, and, and he became like an animal. Down to verse 37, chapter 4, it says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol the honor of the king, king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and, that, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. So the change in words from the first warning, Nebuchadnezzar recognized the God of, of, of the Hebrew children. The second warning, he actually recognizes a God for him. And, and, and of course, everything that, that he did was, was we'll, we'll talk about, what was choices. But what was, what was his choice that led him to this point? Pride. Okay? So, that's the background here. Belshazzar is the grandson of this person. Belshazzar is kind of like seen everything that his grandfather has seen. Okay, so down in, in, in Daniel chapter 5, where, where, we, where we started, and we read about Belshazzar, you would think that everything that happened to Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar would have learned something. So let's, let's jump down to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, uh, verse 17. And, and, and Belshazzar finally realized who Daniel was and that he could interpret this dream. Verse 17 says, Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him that, that interpretation. Hey, I finally got that word. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him all People, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would slew, and whom he would kept kept alive, and whom he would have uh, he set up, and whom he would put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed of in his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him, and he was driven from the sons of men, and and his heart was made like to the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed, uh, that he appointed over it whomsoever he will. Verse 22, this is part. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, can you imagine Daniel standing there and, says, and he's pointing his finger and says, it says, yeah, you, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. God's trying to give Belshazzar uh, a, a chance in understanding what's happening. And Daniel is now preaching to Belshazzar and say, hey, you knew all this. You knew what your grandfather went through. You knew uh, the things that God had performed and the miracles that God did. You should know. And the fact that you're worshiping the gods of, of silver, gold, stone, and, and you took the vessels from, God, from God's house and you desecrated them. This is at a point that Belshazzar... I think, had no reason to keep God in his knowledge. Uh, he was, I think he was at that point at this point because there, there's something when you, when you, when you blatantly go and, and desecrate uh, God's possessions. And this is where Bell's, he had, he had no, he had no, no, no uh, uh, honor for God at, at, at that time. So, this is where we're going to stand. We'll come back to, to Belshazzar in, in, in a minute. But 
we're talking about God as second chances. And let's talk about some, I think, can you see that? Okay. Here are some, I, I just jot, jotted down some uh, people who I thought had, uh, God had given some second chances. And I'm going to ask you for some, some help. We have Adam and Eve in, in, in Genesis. And, and what, was, what was their second chance? What, what did they do that God, get, that God gave them a second chance? Anybody? So, what, excuse me? They rebelled. they rebelled. Yes, absolutely. Or they ate of the tree of the forbidden fruit, they yeah. Exposed it. Yeah, so, yeah. They, they, they promised them a Yep. So, all this, and, and you're absolutely right, everything in a nutshell. But Adam and Eve, when, when God told them, says, you can have everything, you can eat of all the tre- uh, trees in the garden except for one. One, just, and I tell my kids in children's church, you know, God only gave them one rule. That's all they had to do, just to obey that one rule. But they didn't. And, and I'm not going to delve into the, to the reasons, and, and, and there's been many messages on this, but there, that was out and out disobedience. Okay? And, and when, when God, God could have, I don't know, done whatsoever he wanted to do with them, but he, but he didn't. He gave them a second chance, and and his, and his second chance was what? He he sacrificed, made a sacrifice, and clothed them in animal skins. And yes, he 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 removed them from the garden, and some people say he kicked them out of the garden, uh, but he gave them a second chance. And because of disobedience, and kind of like when we when we go through these, kind of like think uh, parallel with 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 our lives today. How about Moses in Exodus? Go ahead and turn it. Uh, Exodus chapter 3. Yeah, Exodus chapter 3. And this is this is the this, this is the this is the calling of Moses. It says, now when Moses kept a flock of Jericho, his father and all the priests of Midian, he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And, and, and Moses says, I will now turn aside and see this great sight which the bush is not burnt. And you go all the way down and, and, and read these things, and you go, jump down where God is talking with Moses, verse 9, he says, Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto, unto, unto God, he says, What? He says, Who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. And he goes out and Moses, and, and, and Moses goes on and down, and you can even see it in chapter 4, verse 1, and Moses answered and said, but behold, there was a lot of buts with Moses. Um, a lot of things that Moses did here in, in the beginning. Uh, and there's some other things in, in Moses' life that, that deserved us, well, I didn't say deserve a second chance, but God gave him a second chance. Anybody know what those are? Anybody? Remember, this lesson will be short and Shorter that if you guys participate. Here we go. His second chances were death, and he was a murderer. Where was the second chance with death? The newborn babe. The newborn babe. Uh, God gave him a second chance there because uh, he was a proper child. When he when he slew the the uh, the Egyptian, uh, he could have been put to death there, but God gave him a second chance. Uh, so Moses is another one. Death and, 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 and murder. Wait a minute, I'm going backwards. Okay, Samson, Judges, chapter 13 through 16. What was his problem? Why do you think, what, what did he do that you think would never deserve a second chance? Does anybody know? He was totally disobedient to what God had told him to Yes. Yeah, why? He was a he was a he was a Nazarite to uh, from birth. But what else? What else was, was Samson's issue? Yeah, well, yeah. What was that? 
Well, yep. He was totally, I know you're squinting, but he was immoral. It was the lust of the flesh. It was a woman. It was those things that, that he thought he could get away with. Uh, Samson, yeah, he was a good look. I guess he was big, strong, buff type guy that, that he, he, maybe it was, his, it was his thought process. That, uh, I mean, he deserved all this, but that's not what God set, up, set him up for. He was a Nazarite from birth. He took a vow, and he was supposed to uphold those vows, and he didn't. And when he came to the point when he was with Delilah, and he started playing around with sin, not, not only the immoral part of it, but he was playing around with sin when he was enticed by Delilah. Uh, those things that he knew weren't supposed to be touched, but yet he kept on getting closer and closer and closer. And what was, what was Samson's second chance? Yeah, absolutely. He, he prayed and asked God, basically, for a second chance. And, 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 and so God, God granted that. But yeah, so, so even though uh, we're in the depths of, of, of immorality, I'm not saying we here, I'm saying if you can be in the depths of immorality, God still will give uh, second chances. How about Gideon? Gideon was, he had another judges in Judges chapter 6 through 8. Gideon's problem was, was, was he, was, he was afraid. Here's another one. He says, I'm the least in my family. Who am I? Uh, and, and one thing, I, 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 I'd be afraid to, to do this, but one thing that Gideon did, he told God, he says, if this is really going to happen, prove it. You know, he put the fleece before. He said, prove it. Not only the first time did, did he ask or tell God to prove it, the second time he told God to prove it. He kind of reversed it. Uh, I'd be scared to death to do something like that. But, but, but Gideon did that, and, and still God gave, him, uh, God gave him a second chance. How about Rahab in Judges chapter 2 and 6? Anybody know? Rahab? Rahab? She was what? Yeah. She what? She protected the Hebrew women. Here's the... Here's the, the uh, I mean, it's not a controversial thing. It's, it's a thing of discussion. What did she do to protect them? Huh? Yeah, she lied. Yeah, she hid them, but she lied. But yeah, her, her, her occupation, she was a harlot. She was a prostitute. Uh, but, but, but still, even through that, when we go back through in, in Josh, Josh, uh, Joshua chapter 6, I, I know I said Judge, Joshua chapter 6, when, when they marched around the, 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 the city and the walls were trembling, one of the things that Joshua said, he says, he told to his, the two that went into the, the city, he says, go grab Rahab and her family. Uh, so that was their second chance. And, of course, he, you could probably understand or remember the genealogy of, of Rahab. Okay, so, so a great, great example of even though our life is not pleasing, God can still give us a second chance. Uh, David? It should be so kind of kind of easy. What was his what was his what was his problem? Murder. Who what? Murder. Murderer. And, and what? And well, yeah, yeah. You would think no way an adulterer and a murderer would ever get a second chance. Uh, and, and and then he writes Psalm fifty one. Uh, but David was repentant. His heart was 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 really torn. Uh, the second chance that God gave him was, was, was really a hard second chance. Uh, because even though, I mean, David sinned, I mean, his, his adultery and, and his murder, uh, God's punishment was, was what? Took his son. Took his baby. I mean, that's hard. But, God, but David understood, and, and, and he understood the second chance that he had. And, and David grasped that, and, and it came to a point where God said that David was, was a man after his what? His own heart. Uh, so yes. Elijah? How did God give him a second chance? Anybody? I'll give you the background. Elijah just went up and slew the prophets of Baal. And he was on that mountain and, and, and he, had a, he had a great victory. Remember when, he, when, when they were in the drought and, and he 
he had to sacrifice and 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 the prophets of Baal were dancing around screaming trying to get God to burn up their sacrifice it didn't work and and he got his uh, Elijah prayed and had his and they, they and God came down and burned up the sacrifice him in the water and and a great and and and, and uh, Elijah and they slew the prophets of Baal great victory you think Elijah would be sitting on top of the mountain understanding that God performed this thing for him but what happens in the next chapter Elijah comes down and, he, and he's having a pity party. He's, he's sitting underneath a tree saying, I wish I was dead. And there's nobody else left but me. And so Elijah, kind of like, he, he kind of, I think he was really on the verge of quitting the ministry. And God, God looked and, 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 and kind of explained to him, says, hey, you're not, you're not the only one. You're, you're not the only man. You're not the only person hanging around. So so the suicidal thought that, that Elijah had and the fact that he quit, you read on and, 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 and Elijah's successor was who? Elisha. And, and, but God gave Elijah a little bit more chance because he talked to him and, and, and Elijah finally heard God and understood. And so God gave Elijah a, a, another chance. Jonah? Nineveh? Come and listen to my fearful tale of the ocean blue. Yeah, what did Jonah do? He ran. This is so parallel to some of our lives. When God wants us to do something, we want to turn tail and run. Just, and, and, and Jonah did. He ran from God. Uh, <laughs> you guys know the story. I mean, jumping overboard, getting swallowed by a big fish, being sitting in there for a while and then the, and that fish vomiting he's up and he's can you imagine being covered with fish guts sitting in a on a beach shore and and then then god says get up and go preach the, and so you're covered all this I, the bible doesn't say he washed himself so i don't know so he's just he's walking with fish guts all over him and and he goes and preaches to the city of nineveh and that was his second chance and they got saved so you know you know the story but yeah but he but he ran from god uh god's a god's a gracious and merciful god and you look at some of these things, and sometimes you, you, you don't laugh, but you smile at, at God's patience that he has with, with some of us and, and some of the Bible characters. Peter, turn to, turn to Luke. Luke chapter 22. I mean, if there's ever, and again... If there was ever a Bible character that got a second chance that, that we could parallel our lives to, would probably be Peter. And in chapter 22, jump down, okay, let's jump down to verse 24. And there was also strife among them, let's talk about the apostles, which of them should be accounted the greatest and he said unto them, this is Jesus talking, the kings, uh, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called, um, uh, can you see what that is? Benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but that is greatest among you. Let him be the, be the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater he that, that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. And ye are they which have um, uh, con continued with me in, in, my, in my temptations. And then jump down all the way to verse 31. And the, and the Lord said unto Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that for, thy, uh, for that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, uh, strengthen thy brethren. Uh, Jesus has pretty much given... Peter, his, 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 his answer here, he said, he said, said Peter, uh, you know, some of us have daytime planners and you can plan out your, your, your weeks and days. And, and Jesus is telling Peter, said, hey, Satan desires to have you. He's, he's, gonna, he's going to sift you as, as we, but he says, I'm praying for you that, that when this happens, that you don't, it's not gonna, it's not gonna not happen, but when this happens, when you go through it, he says, you'll be able to strengthen your, bro your brethren. And but but Peter uh, continued on. But what did he do that was that we kind of 
contributing, or are kind of like parallel in our lives. What, is the things that, 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 what, what was the thing that Peter did? How many times? Three times. I wonder how many times we have not denied like, like Peter did, but you know, when, when we deny Christ in our, in our walk and our testimony and our chances to witness and the things that we do, uh, but yet God is gracious. He's still given us a, the, the, a chance to, because he hasn't taken us out of this world yet. Uh, but Peter denied him three times, but yet God uh, gave Peter a second chance, and, and Peter uh, took a hold of that second chance, and I'm going to say he ran with it, but, but he, 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 was, he did some great things for God because he understood that. He was remorseful, and he, and he repented. I think I have one other, uh, prodigal son. What was his problem? He abandoned his belief. I mean, he was a, he, his father taught him right, raised him right, but when the chance came... Uh, he, he blew it. He just, he just ran off. But, but he was given a second chance. When he came back home, he realized what, what he had done. And, 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 and his father did what for him? Threw his arms wide open and accepted him. Uh, kind of like a picture if, if even though we may fail and we know we fail, God's still there with his arms open and he'll accept us and give us a, a, another chance. So these, there's, there's more in the Bible. These are just some that I, that I jotted down in the Bible of second chances. Does anybody, can anybody think of anybody else that you thought might have, excuse me, anybody, nobody, anybody else? No, you can't think of anybody else. Joseph comes to mind, but it wasn't Joseph going away from God, you know, but what a chance, what a second chance Joseph and his family had. Well, let's, let's flip the coin, so to speak. Joseph gave his brothers a second chance. He said, he said you, you did this for your reason, but God meant it for good. So he said, you didn't mean it for evil, but God meant it for good. So, so yeah, even Joseph, uh, there's a picture of him giving his brothers a second chance, and that was pretty rotten what his brothers did. So we could learn from that, and that's a good example, of us giving others uh, second chances. You know, somebody who's really, really hurt or, or betrayed us or done something that we uh, didn't like, uh, second chance. Anybody else? Uh, the woman, at the well. woman at the well. Yep, absolutely. Good, good job. Yeah. What was her problem? Yeah, we know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and it was, that's a kind of unique picture. Uh, they were accusing. Said, hey, they brought him to brought her to Jesus, and Jesus was riding riding on the ground, uh, hoping they would come to their senses, but. No. So what did Jesus say? He was without sin, you know, cast a first stone. And they all walked away. And he asked the woman, says, where are your accusers? He says, I see none. And God said, neither do I. So good example there, too. Good job, Tony. Anybody else? Yes? Um, what about Philemon? What about Philemon? When, uh, the runaway slave. Okay. Thanks for jogging. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for jogging my memory. I didn't even think of him. But yeah. Good. Good. Anybody else? Naomi. Yes. We could. We could. We could probably stand here and think and and and, and make. A, there's a lot of examples of second chances in the in the Bible. To me, that would kind of like say if we, we kind of like look at these characters and we, and we, we, we study them in depth, but we kind of like forget the, the, the overall picture that God has given all of these uh, uh, Bible characters a second chance. And if we parallel our lives with that, we could, we could probably say, yeah, God's given me. We could probably think back in our lives and our history that, yeah, God's given me a second chance. How many times can you, can, can you think of times when you actually really, really blew it? Yeah, I can and God, God's merciful in that, and that he gave a second chance. Okay, so our second chances. What do you think is our biggest hurdle in grasping a, a second chance that God gives us? Huh? Wow. You read, you read my slides? <laughs> Absolutely. Pride. Uh, Proverbs talks all about pride and, and the destruction it can bring to us. And, and, and if you go back to Daniel chapter 5 with Belshazzar, that's one of the biggest reasons right there. The fact, yeah, he didn't want to retain God in his knowledge, but he was, he was a prideful person. Doing all that in front of his princes and his concubines, his wives and his lords, and a, a thousand 
people there. So yeah, pride's a big thing. I have three others listed. Our past. Huh? Our past. Our past? Yes. You want to elaborate a little bit? Not on your past, but how it can affect... <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, a lot of times uh, you might believe that God, you're, what, what you've done is uh, so bad that maybe you don't deserve a second. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's, a, that's hard sometimes to witness a person who likes that. says, says yeah, I'm so bad. Why would God ever love me or give me a second chance? But that's, and in, in, in the verses, John three sixteen, it doesn't say uh, anywhere in there about the past. It says, for God so loved the world. Not that because, or despite that, or despite, he says, God so loved the world. Okay. Anything else? Self-will. Self-will. Yeah, we kind of throw that in with pride, but yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anybody else? This side's, this side's a silent majority over here. You know, you, can, you can't, I know, I'm not, I can turn this way. Anybody else over here? Any thoughts? Come on, speak up. No? Anybody else? Unbelief? Yes, absolutely. How about people? How about those you know or those you, uh, uh, your peers? Uh, how can people be a hurdle? Anybody? How can a people be a hurdle? They, they can, all you know, the pressure they put on your life and, and, and that you don't want to, you don't want to be an embarrassment, I guess, maybe even at work, uh, Second chance there. How about your purpose? Okay, that, that's good be your occupation, your job. You know, I actually, and now don't get this wrong. Uh, I was, I, I, I laughed when I put these down because they all started with P. I said, yeah, that was, that was pretty, that was pretty, yeah. But I kind of laugh when I say that. But, but our position in life, you know, we could be so self-elevated that, that they could hurt us when, when we, we have an opportunity for a second chance. Okay, so certain things that uh, you could take these, these four uh, reasons and you could put them in the lives of the people we just brought up on, on the Bible, the, the Bible characters of second chances, and you could put those into their lives, uh, reasons why they could possibly not have a second chance. Okay, so this is where, this is where we get into, into some some meaty discussion. This is where I say questions and thoughts because I'm pretty much done uh, with this lesson. So does anybody have any questions or thoughts? Because I'm going to throw some questions up here. Good point. Good point. Okay. That's a good thought. Any questions? We got a thought and we got a question. Here we go. This is my question. Why do you think God gives us second chances? Oh, okay. What? Charlie? I got the silent majority over here. Because he loves us. Okay. He loves us? Yes. It's a good learning opportunity for us. Learning? He's a gift Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Turn to John chapter 8, verse 1 through 11. All your answers were absolutely spot on. This is, this is, and this is the woman at the well that, that, that Tony brought up. And this is, this is, a, this is the, it, it, he, he taught this to, to, to the people. And he's teaching us uh, uh, the process of, of, of giving second chances, forgiving. So he taught it in John chapter 8, 1, 1 through 11. And he practiced it. And, and turn to Matthew chapter 18. Hey, I'm going to have you running all over the place in the Bible. Matthew chapter 18. Verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft, 
shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? And Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Um, then he goes ahead and says, therefore is the kingdom of, of heaven likened unto a certain king. And he goes on and he talks, he talks about this, uh, the, the money owed. And so Jesus, uh, he taught it, but he also says, put it into practice. Okay. And, and, and for us, sometimes it's, it, it's hard to, to I mean, forgive someone once, but when he does it again, he gives, forgive him a second time. As, as parents, uh, we did that to our children all the time. I mean, because my kids weren't perfect, but still... Uh, after they did something wrong, I, I, didn't, I didn't cut them off, but forgave them. And this is the practice that Jesus tells us uh, to forgive. Uh, the golden rule, uh, kind of like paraphrase, do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. And that's found in Matthew chapter 12. Okay? Here you go. How many chances does God give? Huh? Many? Well, I'm going to throw something at you. Are they limited or unlimited? Okay. Let's turn to Romans chapter 1. I had a discussion with Pastor. On this. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because they that might, uh, excuse me, which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Pretty much explains it, without excuse. Verse 21, because that day when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, because, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man, and to birds, and to four beasts, and creeping things. It says, wherefore God gave them up to what? Uncleanness. That's from verse 24. Verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up to a vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use. Go down to verse uh, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. So what Mike said, yes, even unto death. But there comes a point when God says enough. He's going to say enough. It here, this is, this is similar to the unpardonable sin. God gave them. It's like a judicial, a judicial act. He said, it's enough. These guys knew God. They, they made us stop. We're not going to retain God. We're not going to glorify him. We're going we're to do something vile as what they did, worshiping birds, beasts. And that's what they made God into. So God said, okay, you want to do that? Go ahead. I am not going to warn you anymore. I'm turning you, or giving you up to, to a reprobate mind. So are they limited? Yes. Are they unlimited? Yes. How do you know that chances have run out? Mike answered this. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, 27. There's a point in the man wants, wants to die after this to judgment. After you die, it's, it's over. There are no more chances after we die. Okay? So there is a time when God says enough, and there is a point of no return. That's the, the Niagara Falls. Uh, there used to be way back my younger days, there used to be a, 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 a rope or something used to go over, and they had signs on that rope that said, if you go beyond this point, you weren't coming back. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, when God says, enough's enough. But with, with Nebuchadnezzar back in Daniel chapter 5, uh, that very night, God took Belshazzar's life. Okay, so his, his, his chance was gone because I think in his in his act with 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 the, the the vessels and he desecrated God in thought and process. I said that's enough, and so the interpretation was on the wall. Meeny meeny tikel e farson, your days are numbered, and God said it twice. 
You know, when God says something once is enough, but when he says it twice or, or three times like he did here in Romans, he gave them up, he gave them up, he gave them up. Okay? So summary, embrace redemption, take inspiration and restoration. And these all serve as a reminder of God's love and forgiveness. And then I'm going to leave you with this in Psalm 86, if I can get there real quick. In Psalm 86, verse 15, But thou, O Lord, art a God of full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. And that's the God we serve. That's the God who loves us and the God who will give us uh, uh, the, the second chances. Uh, so, now are there any questions, any thoughts? Kind of like done. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, to me, if you have a true fear of God, you know, because I know when I was, uh, there were times in my life when I was backslidden, and there was no fear of God there. Had there been, I probably would not have been backslidden if I was truly afraid. There's things that I'm not going to touch a hot, something hot if I know it's going to burn my hand. Yeah. I, I know that. I know it's going to burn me if I touch it. Yeah. My hand on it. But the fact that we know that God's chances, second chances, are limited, it'd be all the more reason that we, the reason why we should throw out the lifeline uh, uh, to help. Yeah. So I think we should need, need to understand and, and grasp that. Okay. Go, let's go ahead and pray and dismiss. Now, Father, we do thank you for every, again, again, everything you do. Thank you for the lesson. Uh, Father, just to press upon our hearts uh, the importance of, of reaching those who uh, we encounter day by day. Father, knowing that uh, you are merciful and gracious, but Father, there comes a time when that will run out. Have you will away, be it pastors, he preaches, be of the children's church. We love you and thank you.